Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Anthony Egan. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, we call to mind our sins and ask God for mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of the world. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, the Holy Spirit, who has come to save us from our sins. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, Thus far shall you come and no farther and here shall your proud waves be stayed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks, thanks to the Lord, Lord for, for he is good, good for his, his mercy endures, endures forever. Some went down to the sea in ships to trade on the mighty waters. These have seen the deeds of the Lord and wonders he does in the deep. Oh, give thanks, thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. For he spoke and raised up the storm wind, tossing high the waves of the sea that surged to heaven and dropped to the depths. Their souls melted away in their distress. Oh, give, give thanks, thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Then they cried to the Lord in their need, and he rescued them from their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper, and the waves of the sea were hushed. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. They rejoiced because of the calm, and he led them to the haven they desired. Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for the children of men. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, 
that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who, for their sake, died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O on that day when evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them, just as he was, in the boat. And other boats were with him. And a great storm of wind arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care if we perish? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? And they were filled with awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even wind and sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There is an idea anthropologists talk about called magical consciousness. This is the belief that behind everything there are forces at work, good and evil. When things go wrong, evil is at work. You're being bewitched, hexed, cursed, or at very least you've offended God who is now punishing you. Conversely, if you do everything right, placate God or the gods, things will turn out okay. The best result of such thinking is a mindset that generates a state of fear, or, at best, fatalism. Neither of them, I will suggest, is a genuinely Christian response. To do this, I'll go into the background of our first reading, link it to Mark's Gospel, and suggest a new direction through St. Paul's comments to the Corinthians. The tragedy of the book of Job is that we read so little of it in church. Just bits that sound nice, like God's voice in the storm today, which is supposed to make us go, ooh, ah, at God's might and power. But behind this lies a much more sinister, subversive story. Job's sufferings are caused by a bet between God and one of his advisors called the Satan who is not the devil, by the way, but that's another story for another time. The Satan believes Job is only holy because God gives him good things. When things go wrong, he'll reject you, the Satan says. So they hatch a plot to almost destroy Job's life. But Job does something different. He demands an answer from God. He rejects all the magical thinking reasoning that was common at the time, that suffering is a result of sin, whether he knew he sinned or not, or even the idea that one pretends to be sorry so that God will forgive him. He just demands an answer. God's answer, part of which we read today, but which goes on for a few chapters, is essentially like a storm. Lots of noise, lots of force, but ultimately no real answer. Essentially, God says, I'm God. You don't, un you don't understand the way things are, so shut up. Which is all true. 
if we look at the whole cosmic history, it is a dynamic of its own, in which we are part. Things have their own cause and effect. There is no magic involved, no divine act, no acts of divine approval or punishment in storms or floods or whirlwinds or, dare I say it, pandemics. They just happen. But Job is equally right in refusing to kowtow to certain rewards and punishments, ideas, all too present in religions and cultures, he's acting with integrity. He wants real answers, not easy answers, even if they unsettle him. If what has happened to him is God's actions, he wants to know why. And when God refuses to answer, or declares by his own words that bad things just happen, Job chooses silence. He even says that he understands. Many scholars suggest that this should be read not as repentance for some sin, maybe daring to question God, but a realization that life is more complex than his theology. Indeed, that God is not a big sugar daddy dishing out rewards for being good and punishment for being naughty. And I think at the end of the book, God approves what Job does. The book of Job is unsettling. It was probably written at a time when all the old assumptions the Jews had about God had come into question. The simple equation, say your prayers, and follow the Torah, and all will be well, had failed the test of experience. The choice, reject God entirely, or rethink your idea of God. They chose the latter. I see in Jesus something similar in this gospel in Mark. In his ministry, Jesus skirts the border between orthodoxy, following the law, and heresy, changing the way his followers saw God. Such a position is dangerous. Look what happened to Jesus. And many, even the most devoted followers of Jesus, slipped back into the old way of thinking. Not Jesus. He sleeps through the storm. For him, the storm is just a storm, no magical sign of divine displeasure or even evil forces threatening him and the disciples on the boat. And when he finally says, be quiet to the storm, is he not also telling his disciples to do the same? It is noticeable, too, that he rebukes them for lack of faith. This, I think, should be read as a calling to them to a different way of thinking beyond the magical consciousness of reward and punishment. A storm is just a storm. And if you're scientifically minded, find out the reasons why storms happen. Harsh as this may sound, I think we need to embrace this. The God who dishes out rewards and punishments is a false God. The God who must be placated at every moment is a false God. The God of Jesus, the God St. Paul preaches to, is all grace and all freedom. If we act in a manner like Jesus, we do so not out of fear or the need to win favors, but out of freedom. We dare to think, to seek the truth, not satisfied with ready-made answers that pose to more questions. In this, in taking responsibility for ourselves and seeking the truth wherever we find it, we are a new creation. This is not easy. Indeed, in many institutions, social, political, economic, even religious, we are frequently confronted with answers we're expected to embrace unthinkingly. If we ask too many questions, we're at best frowned upon, called disloyal, declared troublemakers. Quite often, I think, we outwardly conform simply because the strain of being an outsider is too emotionally taxing, too risky. So we remain part of the old magical order, we give up being a new creation. But should we? In seeking truth, in not being satisfied with a magical worldview or with compromising his integrity, Job is a model of a free person. So is Paul. Jesus is a free person. Do we dare also to be free persons?
So let us then together profess the faith we all share by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So we bring before the Lord our prayers and petitions. We pray for ourselves and all who hold positions of authority in institutions, for the courage to ask questions when the old answers no longer serve us. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. We pray for all who work at this time in the medical professions, particularly those on the front line of the rollout of COVID vaccines. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for more integrity and courage among those who hold public office. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. We pray for all who are sick at this time, that they may receive the treatment they need and that they feel the support of the wider community. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Today, especially, we pray for all fathers, that they raise their children with integrity, instilling in them the courage to seek what is true and good. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For your own prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, as we bring before you these prayers we make today, those prayers spoken and prayers unspoken, we ask you to receive them and answer them according to your will. And we pray especially that we all may be given that gift of inner freedom to seek that which is true and good. We make this prayer in the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. This be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. This be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of Christ's name, for our good and good of all of His holy Church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more by your spirit you move human hearts, that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and peoples seek to meet together. By the working of your power it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you we might love one another through your Son, who for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on the same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, with Butti our Archbishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As the Lord has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us remain in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.